Welcome back to another video on the BMW E36 in pride partnership with All Things Motoring. Now, if this is your first time here, I'll give you a bit of a backstory. So I recently bought myself this BMW E36 328i with the intention to bring it back to its former glory. Now, some of the projects that we've done so far, I have got a full playlist on my YouTube channel that you can go and see. The first one, we gave the car a bit of a detail and an at-home polish with a drill brush and all that. It was fun. And most recently, I also tackled the audio inside here. And those that know E36 know the struggle with changing your speakers in the rear, but I managed to do it. We changed the head unit and all of that. You're going to enjoy that video. And in this video, I'm going to be tackling the door handles. And also going to be answering a lot of the questions that you guys have given me about the project and the car specifically. And the reason I say the door handles is because if you look over here, each and every door has got these perished gaskets behind each door handle. Now, fortunately for me, the handle itself is still actually fine, but it's just these that I'm going to be replacing today and show you exactly how to do that. And luckily for me and other people working on their cars in 2024, we've got Timu. And Timu was able to provide me with these brand new gaskets in a set of four to replace on E36s. And as easy as that, well, oh, I've said that before, it is normally easy, it should be easy, but we'll see how it goes in this video. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. I've been at trying to remove this accelerator pedal for about two hours. So for this project, this is exactly what you're going to need to get the job done. So some trim removal tools because you've got a little plastic gasket that you have to get out the way in order to get into the actual door to get to pop the handle out. Um, you then also got this. So this is a makeshift a um, little right angled tool that I've made here because you're going to see why you're going to have to pull something out so that's the best thing to work for that as well as a screwdriver to be able to put it back again and lastly you're going to need your new part to give your door handle that fresh new look let's get into it okay so to get things started in order to get um, your little like old gasket out of the way you've got to be able to get inside there we'll pop this whole door handle out now to do that you've got to get to this little like weather protectant um, little hole over here. Now you've got to pop that out. Now this is old and brittle, but you're going to need to use those plastic removal tools and all of that to be able to get it out. So let's get into it. So the first thing I did here was grab the trim removal tool because obviously I don't want to scratch the paint. So I got at it and I tried to get into that center kind of portion of that entire black part. As you can see, there's an outer bit and an inner bit. It's the inner bit that actually comes out. But I didn't have much luck there, so I switched to a different tool because that just wasn't working at all. Oh no, guys, quality control's back. They gotta inspect the work again. You just hope that they accept. Hey, what do you think? Oh, he didn't say anything. It's probably not a good sign. Okay, so with the utter disappointment from the quality control out the way, I once again switched to a different tool using a much more of a pointed edge one here because I realized that there are actually two points on the outside of that inside circle that if you do press them enough it'll actually pop it out and i saw that in a video too but this again wasn't working because i feel like this plastic is so old and so brittle that it just doesn't want to move the way you want it to move and as you can see here by using all these different tools you're actually ruining the edge of this little plastic tab unfortunately but it is what it is but after trying a lot more off camera, I eventually got it to pop out just a little bit more. But I was actually using, again, a different tool here. So I actually moved over to one of those flat metal scrapers. I found that the actual flat edge of that, by putting it down the whole side of that, uh, the inside of this little plug, worked. And I could simply just pop it out. So that's what I did going forward. I managed to pop it out. And this is what that stubborn little piece of plastic looks like. And right there, you can see those little grooves I was talking about, which you meant to actually push from the outside to be able to pop it out, which doesn't actually work. So please let me know in the comments if you've ever done this, did it work for you? It was now time to get into the inside of the door handle to be able to move that little tab forwards and backwards and able to loosen that so you can pull the handle off and get to the gasket. So I grabbed my little makeshift 90 degree tool here so that once you get it in there, you've got a flat edge to be able to use to either pull or push with. Now, it was quite difficult to show you what I was actually doing here, but I was just trying to get my 90 degree tool to either behind or in front of the tab to either move it forwards or backwards because I wasn't too sure what I needed to do at this point. I quickly realized that the tool I was using was too flimsy. So I quickly moved over to a different tool that I had, made another 90 degree on it, and I was quickly able to pull the tab just like I wanted to. 
Now, please excuse the audio you're going to hear next. This is the reason I'm doing most of a voiceover is because the microphone was giving me a few issues, as you'll hear. Okay, so I figured it out, and when I was pushing it in, that's what was actually loosening it, not pulling it out, which was not really what I saw in the video. But regardless, it is loose. So we've been able to take off this old door handle. Um, so now I can get to this crummy old cracked up gasket in the back here to change it. But firstly, let's give this a clean. Now, if you love playing around with cars and getting your hands dirty, or enjoy watching other people like me get my hands dirty, then you're gonna love everything that All Things Motoring has to offer because they're literally about all things motoring. They aren't just car reviews, but they're a TV show, website, and YouTube channel that travels South Africa to cover everything in the automotive space, from car clubs to car shows to concourse events and everything in between. You'll find it on their website, the DSTV channel 189 and YouTube channel. So a big thanks to them for sponsoring this project because this is all things motoring from a lifestyle point of view, from an enthusiast point of view, and just someone who loves cars. Now there's nothing too complicated about the cleaning process here. You do what you need to do to clean it up, but it's really, really satisfying seeing it going from the dirty, dusty brown to this beautiful blue color again. But now what was the part of the video I look forward to the most was actually getting the gasket out of the packaging and seeing what this new one looked like. Now it felt good, it was flexible, and I can see that it's gonna work really nicely. Now just a reminder, this was from Timu, and I was actually very surprised by the quality um, especially the shape, the feel, it looked exactly like how, would it, how I would expect a new one to look. Obviously, I only had this old, brittle, broken up one here to compare it to. But before I could get it onto the handle cover, I needed to give the handle cover a clean first. Now again, there's nothing too special about this. You do your own process, but it's nice to get a, a hard, bristled plastic brush to get everything out of these crevices because after years and years of buildup, you need something that's going to be able to pick all of that up. So... A soft toothbrush also works, as you'll see later in the video, but between the two, you're able to get a nice clean finish. And now with the gasket out and the handle clean, it's time to put them together to see how they fit. And as you'll see here, all of the things line up, the little tabs go where they need to, um, the little plastic points go into the little parts on the gasket too, I don't even know what you call those, but it fits up absolutely perfectly. I'm seriously impressed with the quality of this, and especially with it being from Timu, I thought there might be some issues, especially from a fitment point of view. But the only issue I came across here was me just not putting it in straight for the first time. So it didn't line up correctly. And you can see that because it wasn't sitting flush against the door. And just my luck because, again, quality control came in to see exactly what I was getting up to. And if I was doing the job right or not. And I wasn't. Yep, they look seriously disappointed again. And as soon as I left, I quickly loosened it, realigned everything that I needed to, and quickly clicked it back into the right position. And just like that, I had a door handle looking fresh, clean, working, and looking brand, brand new. Very impressed and very happy that this worked. Okay, so that was a successful install of handle number one. It started off a little bit shaky, but I realized that instead of pushing that tab in, you've got to pull it out to tighten and push it in to loosen, which it was weirdly in the loose position from the start, so... I don't know how that happened, but regardless, now that's the process. It seems now pretty simple. The hardest part is getting that weatherproof little oval tab off of the door first so that you can actually gain access. So that's the toughest part of this whole thing. But now that we've seen the process, I'm going to knock out all three doors. But while I'm doing that, in a bit of a time lapse, I'm going to then get into the questions that you guys have been asking me about the car. What did I pay for it? What are my intentions? Why did I choose this? Everything like that. Enjoy. But if there's more questions you want to know, let me know down in the comments in, in case I didn't cover anything that you were hoping I would. Okay, and starting off with the first question that I get asked the most, which is where did I get the brackets for my 6x9 speakers that I used in the audio video? Well, again, that's from Timu. Now, as you'll see on screen here, this is exactly what they look like. This is the price of it, which I don't think is actually too bad at all for this sort of convenience and to be able to retrofit speakers into this car i think this is a really good solve again got it from timu they arrived in like probably 10 days from ordering it which was really really convenient and very very helpful and then onto the question of what did i pay for the car now this was also asked quite a bit and i did say at the beginning of the series that i would tell you guys so i paid fifty-one thousand rand for this bmw e36 328i which i don't feel like is too much money for a car like this. 
I feel like it's got a lot of potential. But at the same time, there's a lot of them out there that have got a lot higher price. But due to the work that the car needs, the paint work, the sprays, the interior needs some help. Um, also fresh wheels. And obviously it needs a very good service, which we'll chat about next too. So 51,000 Rand for this car. I do plan on putting a little bit more money into it. So I wasn't too put off from paying this, especially with the condition that it's in. And also seeing that there is quite a lot of potential that the car has for being something really epic. Okay, and then onto a question regarding this video. Where did I get the door handles from? So these rubber ones, as well as where did I get the sound from? Like what are the shops and things like that? So firstly, starting off with the door handles. Now you would have known that from watching this video. Again, I got them from Timu, as you'll see on screen here. That's what they look like. That's what you've got to search for. That's the pricing of them, which I don't feel is too bad at all. For me, the quality is really good. You do have to be careful about which ones you use where because they're quite specific about the left, the right, the front, the back. But again, all four of them worked perfectly. The quality is great and they look literally brand brand new once you've replaced them and then on to the second part of the question where did i get the speakers from from the audio video that i did now everything is from take a lot this is the head unit that i got which is also bluetooth enabled which is really important and these are the six by nines that are used in conjunction with those brackets so all the pricing everything you can see here and then these are the mids that i use from kicker also take a lot there's the pricing and these are the ones that sit in the footwell on the driver's side and the passenger side Okay, next question. Are you going to do like a maintenance video as well? Oil change, filters, plugs, and all the rest. Yes, I have a whole video dedicated to that coming up. I have already bought everything, as you can see here. I've bought it all. It's sitting in the garage. I'm working up the courage. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I am planning on doing that one pretty soon. So that's either going to be the next video or the next video is going to be my wheel review. So I am working on getting tires. The wheels are already set up. They're sitting in the garage if you haven't probably seen them in this video too but they're there so it's either going to be the maintenance video or the wheel video coming up next okay and then onto some of the burning questions from instagram will you also do an engine detail on your e36 in the future probably not now i'm going to encourage you to go look at i think one of the first videos that i did where you'll be able to see the engine bay it's in very good condition so i don't think i necessarily need to do that just yet and then how reliable is the BMW inline six cylinder motor and how's your cost of ownership and maintenance? So that's one of the main reasons why I went for this 328i or, or a six cylinder in general is because they are pretty rock solid. Now, the community and a lot of people tend to turbocharge these motors quite a bit from what I've seen. So they are able to put quite a lot of power into this motor without any major issues because of how strong it is. So that was one of the main reasons why I went for this particular car. And then onto the maintenance and cost of ownership. Now, I don't have the answer for you just yet as I'm falling over in the video. <laughs> oh, that chair collapsed, by the way. That's the only reason I fell there, not because of any other reason or things like that. So, faulty chair, I need a new one. Okay, I digress. But anyway, I don't have the answer for you just yet on the costs and all of that. I'm working on it. I still need to service the car. And once I am kind of dailying it from a, on a regular point of view, I'll definitely be able to get back to you on that. And then, are all 328i's six cylinders? Yes. Thank you. An easy question. And then on to one of the other bigger questions that I get is what are the modifications that I plan on doing? So, I don't plan on doing a lot of mods. I do want to try and keep this car as stock as possible. Like, I just want to bring it back to its former glory. Look like it did in the 90s, but give it that OEM Plus look. So, I am going to be giving it bigger um, and newer wheels. Okay, not necessarily newer. But I am going to be giving it different wheels. Um, they are ready. I'm just waiting for the tires to get, um, for the tires to arrive. Then I can do that video for you guys. But I think that's going to kind of be it. But this then does move on to the next question in relation to this is, am I going to be doing an M3 kit? Now, not necessarily because this isn't an M car. So I don't want to make it look like an M3 when it isn't. But I do like the look of an M3 um, front bumper and the M3 styled rear bumper and, and diffuser. So I might look at going that route. But please let me know in the comments. Is that something that you guys would like to see? Is that not acceptable? Although I do see a lot of cars with them. As well as that short wing that you can put onto the boot too. Not anything too high. But just a short one. That's kind of all that I would be looking at doing. But let me know. Am I allowed to do that? Is there something against it? Or are you guys like, yeah, that's cool. Put that on your car. Let me know. And then onto the last two questions, which are my favorite. The first one being, what's your favorite thing that stands out to you the most about your car? For them, it's the straight six. 
Now, for me, it's going to be the straight 6.2. Obviously, it's an incredible engine. But for me, it's more about just the car in general. I love the E36. I love the way it looks. I love its stance. I love the lines. I just love everything about this 90s car. And that was the biggest draw card for me and why I wanted to get an E36. And then on to the last question, what is your favorite thing about owning the car? Now for me, it's the car in general, firstly. Just being able to say that I own one, I've always wanted an E36 and I'm proud to say that I've eventually worked up to being able to get one and work on it and document the whole journey for everyone to see and enjoy and hopefully learn along the way, just like I am. I've known nothing about this, but I'm learning and showing you guys so hopefully you can learn exactly at the same time that I do. And then secondly, it's also just about the community. My favorite thing about owning this car is just other E36 owners. Um, weirdly, every time I've driven past someone who's been in an E36 while well, I've driven in mine, there's always been a wave, a little hoot, a little flick of the lights. And that sense of community is just seriously awesome. Something I didn't know existed, but it is there. And that's one of the things that I love about owning this car. And as we've wrapped up on all the questions, we can quickly do a last little walk around of all the handles now completely finished and fitted with their brand new gaskets looking fresh 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 and brand new i'm super happy with how this turned out i'm happy that i was able to find a solve because i couldn't find these door handles don't look there don't look there i wasn't able to find these gaskets anywhere in south africa so yes unfortunately i did have to go the timi route but i'm glad that i found a solve and that they look really good so thanks for watching another episode on the e36 project i hope you enjoyed this and it was surprisingly easier than I thought. I think it started off a little bit rocky, but it's actually kind of was smooth sailing um, once I got to at least door handle number two, three, and four. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and you were able to learn a little bit more around how to change these door handle gaskets in case you didn't know before. So you were learning along with me, and I think that's the whole purpose of, well, the purpose and the reason behind me taking on this project with the car is that I'm learning as you guys are learning too. I hope I also got to answer most of your guys' questions about the car, about the project, and everything that you've been asking me from the start. But as I said earlier, if I didn't get to your question, or if you want to know something else, then please will you drop those questions in the comments below. So yes, if you enjoyed this video, please will drop a like below and subscribe so that you don't miss any more of the E36 project in the future, as well as all my car reviews. So until the next one, cheers.